Mana stone. Oh, f shit. Mana stone. Okay. When, when, when did I check in last? Oh my. It's been eight hours. What have I been doing? Oh, energy drinks. Why haven't you been invented yet? F f me. No. My mana stone. F you ever quest. You! Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here in Terminus live uh, doing P plus U number 92. I'm joined by my good friend Desrin. How are we doing, Des? Did you almost call me Theric? Nope, 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 <laughs> nope. Didn't do that. Nope. Hey, guys. <laughs> Welcome, 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 and uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it was an interesting VR dev QA. I wouldn't say there was like earth shattering bombs dropped, but some good stuff dropped. Little little stuff on both both ends of the spectrum, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, what do you think your favorite part was? My favorite part: the darkness changes. Nice. I can't wait. I can't wait to see how that plays out. I mean. It sounds cool in theory, but you know we got to play it. Biggest beam track is now the torchbearer. Nice. I like the uh, at the beginning where Joppa mentioned about the the AI and casting, like prioritizing certain spells oh, and yeah. like um, is going to actually like stop what it's doing to cast a heal, or maybe if it sees somebody low on health, it's yeah. going to nuke them or backstab them or switch targets or whatever. Right. I I love. Um, AI mobs, uh, and mob intelligence in general. I think that's super good stuff. Yeah, that was a really good one too. I, I'm almost inclined to change my answer, but uh, <laughs> <Too> <laughs> but late. at least it sounds like we're getting some of that in season two. So we're kind of getting the next revision. Um, but you know, he did talk about a lot of like what's to come as well, like the targeting stuff. I guess is the next step. But uh, but yeah, that's that's going to be huge as well. Um, might lend itself to how. You know, uh, difficult Joppa is saying Mad Run might be. <laughs> right. And and you and I are, are in total agreement about one very important thing, which is if they transfer all the people that are over level 22 to a server, but allow oh, other man. people to hop in and out, then like you have basically nerfed everything that you've been trying to do. Do, do we do we want to get that out of the way right now? If, well, maybe like, before I mean, maybe before we do that, let's just let everybody know that it's not yeah. just going to be me and Desert sitting here talking the whole night uh, because that's not really what we do here. What we do do is this is like a call-in show, so um, we need you, the community, to join the green room, which the Discord has been pasted in the top, and here I'll hit it again. So you need to join that Discord. You need to find Mr. C's down there. So just look for Mr. C. Yeah. And um, you need to join the green room. And then when it's your turn to be on the show, Desrin will drag you up. And then you'll get to voice your opinion on whatever you liked, whatever you didn't like, what how you think Pantheon is doing. Uh, you can be critical. You can be uh, white knight. Uh, whatever you want to do, it's fine. We we have all kinds and all flavors here on the P plus U. So yep. that's just kind of how it rolls. We get all the opinions, get it out there for, for the devs, because we have devs that listen to the P plus U uh, to hear. And it's they listen. True. It's all right. true. So while people are joining the green room, Des, why don't you uh, explain why we're right and VR is wrong about, about <laughs> this? <laughs> so I was on the same page. Cause, so basically the problem is there's only content up to a certain level in the game right now. And there are people that are already surpassing that level of content. And I would say I'm pretty much getting to the point of trivializing it so that, you know, a fairly small group of players, uh, I think numbers were given to be like, you know, less than 70 people. Oh, no, the 70 was how many people are above level 17. So it was like, what, 49, I think it was, uh, people that were 22 plus right now mm -hmm. and kind of uh, able to just, you know, go around farming like crazy. Uh, so oh, crazy. that's the current, the current thing. Because uh, the problem with that, right, is because we're in testing and that means... 
that everyone that wouldn't normally be getting, you know, really good loot. And I, I can totally be like, this would just happen to me yesterday or day before someone just gave me like the best in slot mace for my shaman. Exactly. Because they have like 40 of them or whatever it was. They, they, they have like a bank full of all these items. Um, and you know, that's just, it's going to throw off like feedback. Right? Everything. We, we have a friend who, who um, created a level one character in town and was begging for a shield. <laughs> and a friend. A friend. <laughs> friend. <laughs> we have a friend. And um, they were begging for, for a shield in town. And the guy gave them the best shield that is available right now. I forget what the name of it was, but it's the best shield available that it, that we know about that's available currently. And so... We were sitting, we were camping Manor, and, and so Dimeless was like, hey, see if he's got another one. And the and the friend <laughs> messaged back and said he has 60 more shields of this of this shield that is the best shield that you can get. <laughs> yeah. Which is just ridiculous. I mean And so but but the you know tying that in, you know, going into Mad Run, where which is 17 to 24, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Uh and having you know, not only people lower level having just completely decked out gear, but also people already kind of like more or less out leveling it. You know, it's going to make it a very different experience. Like Joppa's is saying, like it's supposed to be a very hard experience. Yeah. Um, it's definitely going to be skewed a bit because, uh, you know, a decent sized population of people um, is pretty much going to have it on lock like on day one you know we're going to drop at down to the, the hardest parts and get the best gear right off the bat exactly at least and, and so far you know that's kind of relegated to avendir because that's the only server that has people that is are like crazy that crazy high level and so i was on the same page with the whole like all right we'll split them off into their same serve you know their server that's like you know this once you hit level 22 you kind of end up at this like uh, since I play PoE, I think of like standard leagues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like characters they, that are just kind of relegated. They graduate into the pro league. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, they they can handle that and be in their own environment where it's easier to like separate how you know dev could hop into that server, see how they're doing, and then hop into another server and see how they're doing. Um, and so I'm like, eh, that totally makes sense. But then. If you can just create a character and then go there and get all this gear, like <laughs> they're going to be power farming and then come back to the regular server. It's like, well, you might not have the levels, but as Joppa even said that the itemization is going to be great, you know, really good in, in Mad yeah. Rooms, what he makes it sound like. So it's like, you know, maybe a couple days in, it's going to be the same problem and you should just go, go to the server and get the gear. They're so, going to drag like, it back and they're uh, going to have 70 or whatever's the the new cool hotness and they're going to spread it everywhere. Yeah. So that's, that's where I kind of branch off and I'm like, Oh, well, I mean, that kind of defeats the purpose for me. Right. I mean, they you know they're, they're trying to make it work. And I'm sure as we go through more seasons, you know, we'll yeah. have better solutions to these things. It's still kind of growing pains, but, uh, but yeah, that was, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> as a wizard who may from time to time skirt the system a little bit. <laughs> I immediately well, yeah. jumped on that. I was like, oh no, that's not going to work well. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the thing. You have anything to to add to that track? We do uh we are starting to no, get people in the green room. We are 100% aligned on this. I, <laughs> okay. I think I think the if you if you do it that way, you have just 100% nullified the very thing you were trying to do. You have okay, to okay. you have to lock them on a server by themselves. And I'm sorry. Um other people can join them, but they can't leave once they join. If that's yeah, how you're going to do really it. That's really all it. That's all I would say to you. Yeah, so, they can't leave. But uh, but yeah, so uh, just to recap, so the, the things both of us were excited about, I was excited about the, the d new darkness system. Mm -hmm. You're excited about the uh, the new combat AI changes uh, coming up. Very excited. And, and in the future. Um, now let's see what um, other people are either excited about or, you know, unhappy about or you know, looking forward to whatever. Um, I think maybe we should just first come first serve. Mr. C was in there. Yeah. Right Why don't there, you drag right him up so. and I will tell people about our season two experience that is planned. So yep. for static group dot live the Monday after, so that would be, what is it? April 1st. 
think it's April 1st. Uh, the Monday is April 1st. Yeah, yeah so, so April it, 1st. It, it's not a joke. It's not April Fool's it's joke. It's not an April Fool's We're joke. We're actually doing this. We're 100% serious. The We, Static Group Live, are going to do a 12-hour stream that Monday with Nathan Napalm. So um, it's going to be myself, Nathan Napalm, Desrin. Um, we got Mr. C. Or no, we don't have Mr. C. We have Gulu Gulo. We have... Who else? We got Dynlos. And we got... Uh, Vendini, no. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mixing my names. Up. <laughs> it was it was in our group. Ziplocs. Jack, our, there you go. Ziplocs. That was our deeps. Name. Our deeps. Our faithful deeps. Yeah. All right. Well, that is that's gonna be fun, man. I yes. can't wait. Yeah. I'm so grinding gonna, it out right now. We're gonna be streaming season two for 12 hours on Monday. We're gonna start in the morning and we're going all the way. So it's gonna be great. So make sure you join us for that. Um, you know, you and know you ain't doing nothing at work after Easter Sunday anyway. So just uh, yeah, just just click on the old stream and watch us have a blast as we explore Mad Run together. And that's gonna for Heck me, yeah. it's, it's gonna be like a first experience because we're not like I'm not gonna be like exploring into Mad Run before we hit that thing. <laughs> All right. So uh, All we right, got Mr. Mr. C, here. C. Let's get him. Hey, buddy. Hello. What up? So I missed probably the majority of that, but I came at probably the most prevalent part that is in relation to me, and that's about the darkness. Okay. Is that is that your, your thing? What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's prevalent to me because, I don't know if you know, but I am a prominent figure in the Embers of Drift community. And hey, <laughs> hey, Drac, what's numero, what's problem numero uno about streaming oh Embers of Drift? About oh, burning man. through 150 torches per stream? <laughs> also that your viewers can't see a goddamn they, thing because it's so anything. dark. It's so dark. It's so awful. Yeah. Yep. It's so, true. So they're saying that, like, hey, listen, it's going to be even more dark. Also... That you have the whole torch boy incident again, where you're gonna have someone sitting outside of the what? group just holding the torch. Oh, you're not gonna get experience. Oh, we're just, you're just here for banners. You're just here for torches. <laughs> you're, you're, no, I mean you're right. Right? Why would I? Why would I re relegate someone in my group to doing that when I can just have a box that sits over there, buffs me, and also um, carries my torch. <laughs> You're torch boxing. You're torch boxing. Yes! We just created a new term for Pantheon torch boxing. <laughs> it hasn't even been like an hour since this was brought up. Mr. C has broken it already. <laughs> You're what? What can I say well, except you're welcome? I do want to clarify something though. Uh, because it wasn't just the whole like it's going to be darker. That actually wasn't the case. Um, it's actually supposed to be more uh ambient brightness uh at night with the new lighting changes so that should be better according to what they're saying in the caves there should be kind of a similar situation even even mentioned a better dynamic range in the caves but there's the issue with the targeting and stuff and the general just sounds like if you can't see the mob you can't interact with the mob right that was very interesting like you don't even get the nameplate. I do you know of any MMO that does that? I don't know of any MMO that does that. No, I don't really. Um, like I said, it'll be. Uh, I'll be curious to see how that turns out. What, anybody what in chat? That? Does anybody know any MMO that does that? I mean, you know, it's it's either I'm going to mention one of two MMOs on stream. Vanguard or what? It's not Vanguard, <laughs> but I, I brought, whenever we're talking about. Uh, Darkness. I always bring up Mortal Online Two. Oh my goodness! Because they've gone the whole distance. They have black pixels. Like you can't just turn up the gamma in Mortal Online Two. It'll just make it look like trash. <laughs> so, but they've they've done it as well. So you can't you can't just like, you know, find stuff without actually seeing it. But, uh, but I'm really really interested. Yeah, Primus MMO got it too. <laughs> yeah, stands. stands. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't play Mortal Online Two, so. Oh, well, that makes at least two of us, Drac. But yeah, uh, outside of that, like let's let's say the boxing thing. Let's put that to the side. 
Um, I'm sure because I already know like other like, people do have boxes in pre-alpha right now. Wow! <laughs> like I've <laughs> I just grouped with one of them the other night. Um, so like that probably will happen. You're right. Um, but let's say we're we're tackling the system as it's as it's said as it's intended. Um, how do you think that's going to play out? Um, like I said, I think I'll have to wait to see how it actually looks in the long run. It sounds cool, but also it could be bad. Because I know pulling the spider cave, it's already dark as hell in there. And there's invisible mobs. And there's non-invisible mobs. And it just could, it could go into Trouble City, USA. Hey, but at least they won't run away as fast. At least they won't run away. True. Very true. <laughs> I, I, see, I need to change my answer again. Uh, that was the, like that was the best the thing about the. <laughs> I'm sorry. New systems. The mobs will run away as fast. We're we're all one over. It's one of those things we've been we've dealt with for you know, it, it's it's just part of our daily lives now. So any any kind of fix for that kind of uh, you know issue is like it feels big, makes me excited. But yeah, you're you're probably right. It's gonna take some, it's gonna take some playing to to figure out how that works out. And he seems, you know, they seem pretty open to tweaking it and and trying to figure out a good, you know, balance. But uh, do you think it's it's bad that they just decided to disable, you know, the the belt belt torch and uh, and put mage light like way later? Um, is I mean, like how, you think they should have kept that later? stuff? That's the question. And if I get it, are wizards going to be like the most popular people in every group? Because I'm down for that. Maybe. Well, I mean, Enchanter's getting Major Light too. Don't forget that drag. So you're uh, still out. Whatever. That's so great. So wizards are going to be the most popular class to have in the group for every reason except their damage. Except their damage. It's true. Hey, can we just have the wizard cast Mage Light and the fire weapon proc on the group? Can we just have you sit over in the corner and do that? Listen, yeah, we won't. You won't be in the group, but you will sit in the corner. We, and need, we promise we to give the, you a we fraction need the of the loot. and monks to do the actual DPS here. <laughs> and I mean, that's another thing. Will will torches on a stealth rogue like hinder their ability to stealth, which would Ooh. suck? Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. I know, like, right now it doesn't, but uh, but that would be something to think about. I don't know if that's something they plan on doing. Um, I could imagine rogues being a little upset if they have to give up a weapon slot just to illuminate the darkness for people. But I was thinking mostly, like, healers or, like, a, you know, enchanter would have the torch in their offhand. That, that's what I kind of defaulted to. Um but uh we'll that see. second healer yeah i mean as a shaman i i mean i've got the book now in my offhand that has stats on it so that would kind of suck to give up but if it was just a matter of having a you know place to see uh, i mean it's one of those things where imagine imagine if you have a wizard that did actually did good dps whoa, whoa. i know cra- I'm, cra- I'm talking crazy over here and whoa, 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 his whoa. offhand and his offhand was like this cool book that gave a lot of intelligence and spell power and all this jazz. And you're asking, basically being like, listen, give that up so that we can see better. <laughs> that Hey, but Mr. C, Maybe. and you can, you can say, cause you're an embers, like God among men, mm-hmm. but in Thank your, you. in your embers groups, right? What, what happens? Does anyone carry the torch in their offhand on nope. and in a regular group? What happens? How do they go through the dungeon? They don't. They no, they just go in total darkness. <laughs> they just they Oh yeah, I have seen that. They I don't care. That. This is like they if if but, you if you ask DPS classes to to it's either you can see or you can do more damage. They're going to choose to do more damage every time. Yeah. But that goes hand in hand with the whole like if you can't see them, you can't target them is that right is that is that the exact quote you can't target yeah. them right you, yeah, can't, tab target you can't target, target them. them you can't tab target them so you can't even a... mouse over to see if there's a mob there right but could someone tab target with the torch out and then put the torch away and have the target still be there even though that's a great question yeah. that's a great question Mr. C is see? coming with all the good stuff today that's why you come to me, prominent Embers of Drift player, fantasy football, and Pumpkin Man. Very cool <laughs> names that you've never heard before. 
we're, we're giving uh, this- and yet uh screech was uh saying that uh the wizard mage light will be self only and yeah that was that was what was said just to make right. sure that was clear right and i guess that's why a wizard wouldn't have to put it away or maybe he would have to get a torch out because it sounds oh, no. like if they have with... mage light, they wouldn't need the torch, right? But it sounds like even with mage light, it would be limited, right? That it would cost mana, or I forget what there it was. Be, yeah. It sounded like it would be cost. up all the time. He said there was a cost. Yeah, a cost. Which sounds like a mana drain to me. It sounds Fancy like talk it, yeah. for a mana drain. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, you thought the mez mana drain was bad? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the mana drain for having a freaking light out, that's real bad. Dude, what the heck? Off healers wielding that torch. I am draining my mana. Could you imagine <laughs> if it was like actually uh, with Mage Light out, you can't cast any fire spells? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Des, that's why. Oh, somebody in chat will gnomes emit light. That's why we need our archive, Des. We can be the light source in every dungeon. Yeah, yeah. The 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 cracks in our in our shell. <laughs> yeah. Be our. I don't know. I, I that's so far from my brain right now. Um, but <laughs> I uh, imagine it would be like uh, enshrouded, where you can have a weapon that has like a light on it, but it's pretty crappy. You're not going to be able to see you know, anything with it. People that have been watching Pantheon stuff for a while would recall that that was brought up many years ago. That as a actual benefit to having like flaming swords was that you would be able to see better yep. in dungeons. So I don't know what's uh what's currently still on the table. Sure, but dude. That, that has been said before. Our our cracks light up. <laughs> Step on Archive's crack. You get light for a day. Oh my gosh. All right. Who else we got? Who else we got in the green room? All right. Excuse Mr. me. Hey listen, I, I love you. Bye. Mr. C I gave you a shout out in chat. <laughs> He left. <laughs> I would also like right. to. I would also like to mention earlier on. Earlier, it asked what levels we were. We Des and I are currently in the thirteen to fifteen hell that they spoke about earlier. Yeah, we yeah. De- we are desperately trying to get to sixteen for this stream, and I'm. Uh, we're gonna hit it uh, because we are. We are, oh, yeah. We are that kind of dedicated streamers. So uh, the <laughs> the group the twelve hour group on Monday. W- the minimum level will be sixteen. Some of us are trying to get to 17. I don't know if I'm going to make that, but at least 16. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to get to at least 16. I think I have enough time for that. Yeah. Um, I might try for more, but we'll see. It's a slug. It's a slug. If you haven't done it, if the the 14, once you hit 14, it's rough. Manor well, starts uh, to slow down. Yeah, and, and it's just a matter of you're kind of the only one place for a while. So I'm really glad they addressed that. Um, yeah. And if, if someone wasn't here for the uh, Q&A, they did say they don't want to overwhelm, like, let's say, Throne Fast. Right. With, with a all ton of stuff. POIs, right? Um, you know, they do want you to travel. And we do only have, like, a portion of AVP right now. So... Uh, they said Halnir's cave was meant to occupy at least, you know, a portion of that 13 to 16 kind of range. Uh, and we don't have Halnir's cave right now. So right. that's one solution. Of course, I'm, I'm, I think they also said that there were more POIs like around AVP that would suit that level range, which is something that I was kind of thinking would be, uh, the case. I don't know if that's going to come with mad run, um, because I, I've been telling people, you know, Mad Run is a part of AVP, but, you know, there's a decent amount of area just in between Demeth and Mad Run. Uh, so I'm curious what that's going to be populated with for season two. Right. But, um, yeah. Uh, and remind me, Des, is Mad Run, is, is that the area with like the little balls? And the skeletons? Does that, is nope, that part of? No, the, the little, uh, the little pond was yeah. actually on the way towards uh, the plains. Oh, that's on the way to the plains. Yeah, where oh. there used to be an ogre that walked yeah. around. And... No, no, no. I remember the ogre. Yep. Gray box days. And the werewolf. He's well, over the there. Werewolf... Right? No, no. The werewolf is in between Demeth and uh, Mad Run. Oh, okay. Well, yep. I get my yep. areas confused, which all happens often. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Do we want to get Sparrow in here? Yeah, get Sparrow. Get chirp from her. Well, the Scar Ranger herself. Exactly. Yep. Scar Ranger Sparrow. <laughs> She's <laughs> unmuted, uh, probably against her better judgment. So let's get her in. Coming in hot. 
Hey. <laughs> Scar. Scar. <laughs> oh. Scarrow. No, never. Never. So that's the other Pokemon. So there's Scarrow and then there's Flaro. Flaro and Scarrow. <laughs> Flaro, a Flaro I'll deal with, but no, no Scarrow ever. <laughs> all right. All right. So. I guess what thoughts? Any any particulars? Anything that we said that was wrong? Oh, guys, you know, tons of things you say are wrong. But um, the lighting thing, I don't know. I I've played in the gloom enough <laughs> that I'm I'm leery about these lighting changes with the tab targeting not working because I already it's already annoying when you're like trying to play on the side of the gloom so you're half in light and as soon as you turn your camera around and you're in the dark, you can't target anything. It's super annoying. So yeah. I kind of avoid that area when I can. So I'll have to see how the lighting thing works. Yeah. I, so that is partly because of the gloom like effect being attached to your camera. So it's really, uh, you know, it feels a little weird because you, you swing around and it's like suddenly black, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, the effect is still the effect. So if it was tied to your character instead, like, you know, it, it would still be dark. And it sounds like Joppa wants it to be very dark and uh, very, like, kind of restrictive. Um, but I, I always, I keep coming back to, I don't know which gloom <laughs> is Joppa's, <laughs> like, intended gloom. Because right. there's, like, several different versions. Like, there's the gloom just out of Avalia, which is, like, two glooms on top of each yeah. other. And that's the one I usually try to avoid because it's super yeah. annoying to try and target anything. But then there's like the gloom uh, next to the um, the yellow jackets up in AVP next to Demeth, mm -hmm. right? And that's yeah. like, okay, that gets kind of dark, but it's more of like a really cool effect yeah. more than anything. So I, I, yeah, I don't know what the intended gloom level is. That yeah, would change that's my fair. opinion. Well, I thought he said it didn't didn't he maybe I miss or was mixing this up, but didn't he say it was gonna be the gloom was more smoky? Like a smoky gloom? Yeah. I think he was just comparing it. I don't know if yeah. I, I, I think he was meant to describe the feeling of it more. Oh, you yeah. know, I don't know if that's how it'll play out, but uh yeah, I'd be curious, you know, if this is just like a temporary effect or something like that to get the idea across. I'm I don't know. Yeah, I'm all about having the dark uh, and with ways that can mitigate it. But um, the the targeting thing, I just don't know. I'll have to wait and see. I mean, but, um, compared to darkness that you can just tab through. Uh, I get that, but I don't know if the trade off to making things hard to target is going to be worth the trade off. Yeah, definitely going to have to feel it out. Yeah, exactly. I will. I'll wait and see. <laughs> Reserve judgment, but I already yeah. know kind of how that feels to not be able to tab to something that's literally right in front of you that you can see, but you can't tab to it because you're in gloom. True. Uh, yeah. True. That's rough. That's rough. Um. Uh -huh. the The other thing that I heard that had me like, no, 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 was getting rid. Of the discussion anyway is on the table to not having the social buffing. And oh, yeah. just hearing him say, you know, we can't just stick <laughs> to nostalgia. I was like, it's not just nostalgia. I do this in Pantheon. Like, now people run by, I'll throw buffs. Because I play a shaman most of the time if I'm not playing a wizard. And I love just doing run by buffings or I'll just throw a hot on somebody as, you know, they're fighting. Or it's just part of the game for me. It's social. You make friends that way. Just to get rid of that, just so people don't go to the well to get buffed so they they're all buffed up to go out and fight for the 40 minutes like so what they have buffs for 40 minutes it's not a big deal i just it's such an important part to me it, to me it's like non-negotiable there has it's to be so social buffing because i i quoted that because i was like <laughs> heck yeah joppa we do not need to just stick to nostalgia <laughs> for nostalgia's sake oh, yes. but but i i agree with you that i think social buffing is a really big deal and it's it it's a huge part of a social hub um yeah. here i'm gonna just get it out of the way and drop vanguard one of the biggest things <laughs> here we go in town here we go was getting your diplomacy buffs <laughs> yes. um, and buffs from other players yeah 
Um, and so, yeah, that is huge. And I would prefer that they find a, a solution that, that works on both sides before dropping it entirely. Um, and, or just deal with the, like, kind of, you know, work around the consequences of the way it's currently implemented before dropping it. Because, yeah, it, it, it is worth the problems. Yeah. I think. Exactly. And it's kind of like what we were saying about the tab targeting. Is it going to be worth what it's fixing to get rid of? You know, it, it's such a huge part of the game. When you, when you want an old school style, like at least classically spirited game, that is a huge part of it. Well, is that social buffing? Here's the problem they're trying to stop, literally, right? So here's here's the problem. Is yeah. what I we were joking about it earlier, but it's not a joke, right? We have torch box. Right? Yes. <laughs> we have dude off to the side that all he does is hold the torch and cast the buffs, right? And and then your group is fully buffed all the time. But, yeah, but you can even have that with the examples he was giving of it just needs to stay on your bar when you buff somebody, but as soon as you take it off your bar, you know, that buff goes away. That's kind of what he was talking about. You could still have a buff bot sitting there. Plus, you have to pay them for another account. What does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you literally have to pay for another account. Well, it matters it matters if you care about the the quality you of think... like the leveling of the game if you're if you're upset about people giving away high level items then this is kind of that way you think it's going to be a significant amount of people that pay for an extra account to have somebody sit there and keep a buff on there's them. people in that are vips that are already doing it right but is that going to be a significant amount over the entire game i, think, I don't think so i think yes i, I wouldn't there's half the or half the TLP population has at least one box. Well, that's good for VR, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's great for VR, but <laughs> I mean if they're VIPs paying seven fifty a pop, like yeah. you go. <laughs> I don't think there's very many, but I know there's at least more that's than one. That's what I mean. There's not very many, really. But when the they're gonna pay no, no, no. for a sub. But when the game is only fifty bucks. And it's only, yeah. and then it's only ten bucks and a, a month, sum. and it's ten bucks a month after that. So is mm -hmm. EQ though? That's that's what you're paying. Yeah, again, I didn't see that as a huge problem. I didn't go around seeing people just sitting outside of groups with a character constantly buffing. I used to have to go to the bank and sit there and you know pay plat for buffs. That was a thing, but that helped the economy with get you know getting money through the economy and. I'm not saying I, I necessarily. It was a good thing. I don't. Not saying I personally disagree with you. I'm just saying like. Yeah. They mm -hmm. seem to want to be able to somewhat control. Um, because also but this game's about letting players play the game the way they want to play the game without right. exploiting. But also, right? Also, you have to then balance those buffs. So if you're saying that everybody's going to cuz you have to assume if you just let everybody buff everybody anytime then you have to balance those buffs to always be on so every encounter every group every group dungeon encounter every every time you go up against anything any boss anywhere you're going to just have to assume that they've got all the buffs there's plenty of times we'll buff up at the well, go fight for 40 minutes. All the buffs are gone. We don't go right. running back to the well. We right. have to fight without the buffs. But what what Dez and I are saying is... Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Never mind. I'll cut Dez out. What I'm saying is, is versus, there's that thought. That means that the buffs have to be less powerful and that... Because you have, and then, and you also always have to assume that every buff is going to be on every person anytime you do anything, which is fine if that's, that's how you want. That's not wanna, the case now. But that, I mean, I'm constantly. I never go anywhere without double wind strider anywhere. As <laughs> like soon as you're about you to go right now. Without, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just sit on the wall and increase my. Just gonna, I need to revise my answer again. <laughs> Also, Not having double wind strider or, is now my favorite. Well, yeah, oh, that's, that's also your Dez's yeah, new favorite. Fix. But also in a, so or or you can have it so you can only buff the people in your group, period. No, and then you can make no. the buffs more powerful because it's only for the group. 
Well, then they're not going to want wizards, and they're just going to want shamans. I mean, so. I'm sure that's probably the case. <laughs> Is that really what you want? I mean, I'm hoping at some point they uh, they fix the wizard damage. <laughs> Windstrider over damage. Hmm. So, hmm. because of LAS... Uh, there is a point where, and, and we've started doing this in, in our groups when I have to group with another shaman, have to, when when I get to group with another shaman. Sometimes. Uh, where we, <laughs> where we, <laughs> well, well I, I guess I, I'm not even going to say anything because that's, that's public. That's, that's in a VOD. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, that's, um, you have to figure out like, okay, what do, what do you want on your bar? What do you want in your bar? And so there's only so many buffs that you can have within the group in the first place, unless you have multiple classes and uh, mm -hmm. distribute that, which is a fun bit of gameplay, in my opinion. Now, I like that the buffs are powerful. I don't want that to change. Mm -hmm. I like that social buffing is a is powerful enough that people want it. Like, I mean, it literally has created a hub of like 20 people standing around the well at all hours mm -hmm. um, just waiting for buffs. It's it feels nice, and I don't want to get rid of that. I would rather them design around it, uh, but keep it in to some degree. Now, I could see something in between, though. Uh, I don't want to throw a bunch of ideas out, out here because it's an opinions thing, not ideas thing. But, like, if, you know, maybe your group members received a certain, like, bonus according to the buff. You know, if it, up, if it was, like, a lesser version that you apply to other people. So it's still nice to have, but not as incredible as if you're in the group with the buffer. And I'm right. saying and that's, I'm saying that's fine, but then you have to balance every encounter with the idea that everyone's got every buff. That's not a fact. Minor though. buff. Because, and it's only for 40 minutes. Because otherwise every every encounter will be trivial to people who I, I tend to disagree. Yeah, uh, that's I don't well, that's why so. I think if if it was and, a nerf version and of as the Stan buff, said in chat, with the tiny population right now, we're already seeing everybody having all the buffs all the time. As as the yeah. population grows, there's going to be more and more people, more and more places that are just going to be sitting around doing drive by buffing. So you're just going to have all the buffs, which is fine. I don't see it that way because right now there's a problem, and when you zone, you lose all the buffs anyway. <laughs> well, so, that's going. How is that happening? Yeah, there's but how's that been happening then? That everybody has all the buffs from the how, well. That the, let me like tie that in because I think that's part of this is go to go to um, Demeth. You don't mm -hmm. get all the buffs in Demeth, right? So I guess my point would be that we only have two zones. We we have one point three zones right now, and if you venture far enough away from a hub you're probably mm -hmm. not going to have your buffs for very long and that's going to exactly. start playing out. So I, I don't think it's to the p point where like, we just have to balance everything as if everybody had all the buffs. Um, and I think they have ways they could work around that personally. Yeah. Yeah. I think having 45 minutes of feeling like a superhero and then noticing when everything goes away and having to be more careful. And I think that's fine. I think that's part of the fun of it. It's that exciting, you know, you get those buffs, you run to your spot, wherever that's going to be, you get to fight, and then they start dropping off. There's that feeling of like, oh, I wish I had those still. And then you go back and get them again. I haven't been in a group that does that. They yeah, they don't no. just stop playing and like, oh, we got to go back to the well and wait there for an hour to get all the buffs. Like, no, or, or, you, or you bring along the buffing classes with you. On the on your box, your high. Man, people are just going to do that no matter what. You're going to have people healing outside of groups. You're going to have. So should you not have healing outside of groups? Then, like, there's tons of stuff people are going to do if they're willing to pay for an extra account. Like, I don't know how you're yeah. going to stop that, other than saying you can't do anything to anyone outside the group. Exactly. The only answer to that is literally you you can't interact. It's it's right. completely locked. Uh, you know, and I don't. I don't think even you want that. <laughs> no, I don't. I listen. I'm, uh, like, I'm a little bit playing devil's advocate here. I'm not saying I don't yeah. want. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's it's good to think about. That is think that, that is the early. reason why they are concerned about this. Is I think the yeah. balancing yeah. aspect becomes much more difficult <laughs> if you let people buff people to the hill. Yeah, but yeah. everybody knew the consequences because most of us have played EverQuest and we went into this knowing that that's how 
it's done anyway. Like, if they can tweak things, fine, but I don't think they should just consider getting rid of social buffing. Right. That's something, a huge part of it. Something is definitely going to have to be done at some sure. point. But until the game world gets large enough where we can start seeing the effects of, you know, players being more spread out um, and, you know, maybe even to the point where we get to level 50 and we see, OK, what does the effect of a level 50 buffing mm, a level right. five have, you know, <laughs> like, like yeah. there's yeah. there's a lot that's still yet to play out that, you know, I, I kind of think it's one of those things we could tackle it when we get there. Um, but I'm it does sound sure. like they're doing a, they are redoing how buffs work kind of on the back end, which I think is kind of the core, you know, technological. <laughs> well, yeah, even in EverQuest, there were level limits. Like you had to downscope your your uh, buffs that you right. were putting on really low level characters. In so, some cases, you had to be a certain level to get a buff, right? It's like yeah. I'm thinking like KEI, right? You had to be like five, right. I think. Yeah, so yeah. they they even had ways to get you know to right. fix that, tweak that, but you got to keep social buffing, even if you have to tweak some things like that. What if it, what if it, it was it, social buffing, but not all the buffs? What if like it was run speed and like some other buffs, but not everything? Mm, what if certain buffs? I, just, I love social buffing. I don't I don't see why if I have a buff <laughs> other than if it's self only, um, that I shouldn't be able to toss it on somebody. So many times I've done that as a shaman just and somebody is so happy and like, oh, thanks so much and have a great day and just talking, you know, it, it's it's there's a great feeling to it. And it's just such a good yeah. community building thing that it's not worth getting rid of because of what it might fix. Okay. That's yep. that's my we'll, pitch. We'll we'll see see how it plays out. I <laughs> I did like I agree on on your end track, something is gonna have to get done. Of course, especially by the time we get up to fifty. But on the right. other, on the other hand, I don't think it's. I hope it doesn't play out to the point of well, we just can't have nice things. We <laughs> can't like, have hey. nice things, you know. Um, but yeah, so I do want to remind folks. Uh, I do see Man of Rohan in the green room there, but uh, he is all by himself. So if you want to get your voice heard on the show, uh, make sure to hop in our Discord, find the green room channel. And pop in there. Uh, maybe make sure your mic is working, <laughs> and uh, and then we can drag you in and have you on the show. And uh, was there anything else, Sparrow, from you? I just had some quick uh, little points. I was glad to hear uh, guild tags and having guilds might be coming soon. Oh, that would be I awesome! Think that would be really fun. And that guild housing was kind of tossed out there. That's the first time I'd heard about uh, that. Yeah, some player housing. I was like, whoa. Yeah. yeah, any type of housing, and, um, actually. I asked Nafel about the uh, group harvesting. He said he's working on it, but no ETA. Earlier so, in the, whoa, earlier whoa, whoa. In the stream, Zellick we Duren also... Zellick five uh, subscriptions to the static group. Oh, uh, thanks, Zellick. Appreciate that. Yeah. Earlier in the stream, Joppa did confirm that there's no to ETA on the return oh, okay. of group harvesting. I must have missed that one. Yeah, that was so and, yeah, the last little thing was just uh, I'm really happy to hear that they're really sticking to the timetable for, I think, the yeah. seasons, if I'm getting the right yeah. <laughs> category, right? Yeah, they're very and, serious about that. Yeah, and they're doing. he said they're doing whatever it takes to get what they need to get for their seasons in that six weeks. And that's so yeah, I'm loving I think, that. I think even to the detriment of, like, classes and races, it's that kind of sounds like to me. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Because well, I, I think it's it's about the focus. The, yeah. Their focus is like, you know, because we've gone a long time, and, and we all know this. Of a lot of things have been kind of thrown at us as like, we don't really know if that's something coming tomorrow or in a month or in six months, in a year or post release. We have no idea, but it's just kind of a lot of stuff all at once. And I really appreciate that VR has just picked one thing. <laughs> One thing to commit to so that they can, you know, throw everything at it and make sure that they hit a timeline and consistently. And it sounds like they're very serious about that consistently part. And really the the main ch thing is content releases because that's more predictable. Mm -hmm. It is more predictable than, a, you know, getting a race in. It's more predictable than, uh, you know, a, a class. Uh anything technological you know like there's so many variables that can happen 
during the process of creating those things. But, you know, a dungeon, as long as they have the, the tools and the assets is kind of like, you, you just got to put it together. Um, and so I think that was a really great choice and I'm glad they're very serious about sticking to that. And it gives us something to look forward to that we can like, you know, tangibly. I think it's really smart as well. I just think it's like, um, really, uh, an intelligent way to move forward. I think it's really intelligent in terms of getting, the alpha pledges and the and the lower level pledges in the game some too because you know before and i mean we all i mean i can't even remember what happened two weeks ago right but like it's only been a few months <laughs> since it was just vips right and and like yeah. um so, actually a lot has happened in the last year yeah <laughs> think it's, about it's it. a lot since January, yeah. So, like, I there really seems like they're on a tear right now, and I I think it's really good. And if they can pull this season two launch off and have a complete um, another set of of uh, zone, another area, and it's good and it's solid, then I think it's going to be a complete total win for them, and we'll just prove to everyone that they can um, continue with this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm really curious to see what it's gonna look like once they start getting into stuff. I mean, I know Mad Run wasn't in before, but the, adding things like Halnir's Cave and uh Hangor, I mean that all was there before. I'm curious to see how difficult it's gonna be for them once they start getting in, like Wild's End or Silent Plains, right. you know, places we haven't seen if you know team one is gonna be getting stuff in and how quickly can team two work on each of those things that's just been put in and be able to keep up with whatever the next piece is. Right. So yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I'm also very curious about team two myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be hard, I think. So we'll see. That was it for me guys. Well, that's all I got. Team Advark. You team sure you don't want to keep going? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want to be mean to man of Rohan. Um, I'm sure he has something to say. Yeah. Maybe about some of the stuff that was in the chat that if he doesn't bring it up, I, I probably will. But well, there uh, you go. All right. Well, yep. thanks for coming on, Sparrow. Thanks, Sparrow. Thanks for having me. Yep. Take care, guys. All right. And just before Man of Rohan pops in here, just for anybody that didn't hear in the Q&A, I did want to echo what nerds in the podcast said, uh, asked. Uh, yes, summoners are confirmed not coming in season two, unfortunately. Joppa said soon thereafter, so take that for whatever you will, um, which is a bit of a blow to me, but uh, that was officially made known. Um, so, Man of Rohan, as soon as you're unmuted, I'll grab you. Go, go. O4 says, when is season two? Any time frame? This Saturday, which I believe Ziploc's as yep. Ziploc said, is March to 30th. PantheonMMO.com slash seasons. They actually updated that page today with um, new information, uh, including season three title. So, boom. Uh, I mean, and other stuff. There's other Ooh, stuff on there. What's the season but, three title? Uh, of Blood and Ice or something like that. Oh. Uh, so, Hangor. It's Hangor. It's Hangor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, anyway. All right, let me get him in here. Perfect. Man of Rohan. Hello, sir. Hey, guys. What's going down? Well, you stole my first talking point about Summoner. God. Well, I just, I just confirmed it. What do you have to, you, what do you have to say about that? I only have to say that I'm bummed. That's, uh, and not, not really bummed, uh, exactly. But you know, that's definitely something that I've been looking forward to, especially a new way of playing um and i've <laughs> i've only been at this for a fraction a tiny little fraction um all you math folks out there i know everything could be a fraction even one out of one. Oh my gosh but still <laughs> i mean a tiny little tiny bit uh of experience uh, compared to some of y'all out there but still i mean uh having new new places to go um as long as there are interesting things to do there that's uh, that's probably good enough for me right now. So I'm enjoying I'm enjoying playing with the classes that are available. But yeah, a little bit of a bummer, um, especially with the you know, <laughs> uh, when when was it? 
uh, I forget when it was, but Joppa was really kind of uh, egging us on about the the summoner being really soon. And they're like, ah, no, probably not in season two. I'm like, what? That's another six weeks after that. So yeah, another six I, weeks. I, I've, so. I remember what you're talking about because I I think at one point it was like, oh, I don't want to misquote here, but I think he he said like we could have summoner in season one, but it wouldn't, you know, but we want to get assets in. Was that right? Or was that talking about season two? I thought he was staying one and then, you know, so right. Yeah. Yeah. That That's my recollection, whether it's true or not, but yeah, that's, my yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look that up, but I, yeah. So e- either way it sounded like, I mean, I thought it was coming in season two. I, I, you know, told people that I thought it was coming in season two. Um, yeah. So yeah. I mean, that was my prediction as well that both ogre and summoner, but I mean, I guess there's still a chance for ogre. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there wasn't anything definitive there, but. At least I don't remember. I I am a little on drugs, by the way. So, <laughs> so who knows? Oh, right, maybe. right. We don't have to talk saying. about that. We don't. No, nope, we don't have nope. to dig into that on air. Certainly not. Um, but uh, but uh, I think uh, interesting thing about the ogre though was that there now ogre and human the human kind of refresh is coming at the same time. It sounds like. Okay, good. That just sounds like scope creep to me, but whatever. Just uh, push ogre out. Um, <laughs> we might as well that's those are the the those are death words in software development we might as well do you think we'll um, get a uh are we going to be able to race change or are we going to have to start over to get ogre oh, oh come on a, drag interesting question <laughs> um of course we are going to have to start over race change that's crazy. Uh, that's painful. That's gonna be painful. You know what? I think you need to. I think you need to write a forum post and uh, and a Discord thread on it, Drac. You somebody it's did, funny you mentioned that. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say somebody did ask this on the stream the other night. I just want to let everyone know. As the last that we've heard, and Desert, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but the last that we heard, they don't want to wipe until uh, it's chapter two. So the first three seasons are completed and then they don't want to wipe till after that that's the goal i think the the way it was phrased if i remember right was that their goal is to not wipe during chapters or yeah not wipe during chapters correct um so that kind of leaves it open to interpretation you know at the end of a chapter are we like guaranteed to wipe i don't know i don't think they definitively said that um it would make sense though at the rate of like progression they kinda, like implied you it, know though. yeah exactly yeah, I mean that's why I've been holding off on playing a dire lord. Um, is your waiting for the ogre? I want to be an ogre, or a dire lord. <laughs> if I'm going to be a dire lord. Oh yeah, yeah, the, absolutely. The, absolutely, absolutely. I'm going to go all out if I'm going to do that. So um, you're going to, um, but I would be a shire lord too. You know that would be um, that's what my son is <laughs> wanting to be too. So, uh, um, but half that's kind of a throwback. Way. That's like that's like two years ago, man. Yeah, I know. A shire lord. <laughs> Look how old we all are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, Summoner, uh, a little bit of a blow. Um, I, I uh, Nafel Nef- um, answered me in chat about shields, because that's been, I've been complaining about oh, that yeah. for weeks, and, and uh, <laughs> everyone's like, just shut up, we know. No one sucks. cares about your shields, MOR. Quit, quit. And so wait, uh, it. just I, to describe, what what did you mean about the the so, shields? So uh, when you are, if you're an armor smith, uh, there is literally only one item you can make. Uh, well, there's two two uh, actions you can take to get your skill to go up in armor smith before 25. Um, and so uh, that is uh, making a shield. And so I made so many shields. Um, he made I gave a lot most of, of them away. Um, I still have three more. If anyone's on, if on needs a shield. Shields. <laughs> um, if but I've the made market it for a kite shield. <laughs> yeah. a it's, a, it's a pretty darn good shield though, if you want it. So, um, <laughs> anyway, now I can make uh chain. So that's good. But yeah, he said, you know, something stuff is coming, you know, it's coming soon or whatever, whatever you want to say. I, I don't remember his exact, exact, exact words, but, um, there can are you, changes happening. So can you not well, that's, vendor that's those nice back to the it. vendor. They don't buy them. The, the crap. Uh, they are 50 copper. They are not worth Ooh. selling back if I Ouch. could give it to somebody. So I'm just, they're yeah. just kind of taking them space in my bank. Yeah. It's, uh, the, com- the combine selling is all weird. Bounty and I got into a, into a discussion the other night about, it's weird like you if you combine and make a wooden 
um, buckler face, um, you can yeah. sell it for like three times what the components would sell for. I think, uh, uh, but it, yeah, Neff talked about that a while back as a you know, it's kind of like a temporary solution, um, yeah, until they have like a really foolproof, uh, well, it's, way to it's my way to that. make money back right now because <laughs> <laughs> it's so expensive. Well, for... So, speaking of shields, though, uh, were you around for the discussion on the shield, like the new stat for shields and, and all that? Y yes, that it's not just a hundred percent block, that it's. That's very interesting, um, especially when I end up doing a little bit of soloing as a cleric. Um, that's going to be just something to deal with now. and um, But now it uh, makes it a little more um, important to make sure that I have shields on uh, that, that I cast um, on to absorb. <laughs> so as a help for any of the uh, people I'm trying to help, so tanks and otherwise. But yeah, that's... Yeah. That's cool. I mean, I'm I'm glad. I think I think that makes sense. Um, in real life, you can the shield isn't foolproof. You know, you can do things. So that makes sense that you would have something like that to make that more of a game. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, like I I love the warrior. Uh, first of all, I I even though it's you know only up to level ten, uh, I really like the warrior and what they're going for. But I will admit, the amount of stuff that you can just say, like. No. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. So being, you know, being that block isn't literally 100% mitigation is, is probably good. Um, yeah. It also brings up, you know, more differences in the shields, I think. Um, well, and so you need that, to be able to, yes, right. You can differentiate, hey, this shield is better because it's um, block percentage rating or whatever. I forget what the yeah, name Yeah, maybe it was. blocks more often, but mm -hmm. mitigates less, you know, that kind of a stuff. Right. And then um, it, it, then it just makes the uh, later later level, later uh, spells, later whatever, um, that much better. You know, you can't just say I'm at level two and I have a block rating, you know, and getting back into the um, little bit of twinking uh, conversation you were talking about before <laughs> about, <laughs> about stuff, you know, and I, I, yeah. I have thoughts about that. I haven't fully thought, of, thought through that, but yeah, I mean. Um, I, I th I'm mostly on Sparrow's side about that um, in regards to a group buffing or, or, or twinking with items at all. Um, I think that all of that is, uh, it's, it's VR's job uh, to in incentivize the things that they want to continue and de-incentivize the things that they don't want to continue. So, you know, if it, they don't have any control other than that, you know, because it's a game <laughs> we're all playing, you know, when they're not controlling every action we're doing. So... Just having a uh, straight up, you can't use this item like EQ did in other games. EQ2 did, I mean, <laughs> um, where you have to be a certain level to use something. I, I don't like that, but I think I think there needs to be a give and take on on what you're saying. You know, I think oh, it probably well, is a good idea. Uh, you know, maybe maybe one so. of these days, let me introduce you to my like seven thousand word document on how to fix that problem. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a lot in there and i don't have a full full thought about that it's, so I don't it's need to complicated discuss it, but yeah really. so the des thesis <laughs> yeah just let me play is, is on to it a little bit there for sure um life is pay to win <laughs> well no the scaling with uh with skill with skill, with skill yeah. yeah yeah so I, I think there are a lot of cool things that could be done that make it more fun and more desirable to do certain th do it a certain way so that's what I mean by incentivized. Just those things that are incentivized are always the ones that are used in in life and yeah. games and whatever. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, and I had other thoughts. Um, <laughs> trying to remember them. Uh, oh, obviously, darkness is going to. I'm really excited to see what. Yeah, that's excited like. is the word. Excited is the word I always say, apparently, but that is true well, we in this do. case. When, uh, you know, I. Yeah, when it's just because the darkness just seems unreal, you know. Not that it shouldn't; it should be oppressive in places. It should be extra in some places. But when I'm just running in the dark or uh, uh, through uh, the field, and there are some trees around, as a human, if I'm doing that, which I've I've done plenty of times in my life, there's a certain amount of ambient light that is out there that your light that your eye is catching, you know, that is not absolutely pitch black. Um, in a lot of cases, especially if you're near a road and there are torches and right. things like that, that light 
those photons go pretty darn far, you know. So and that was uh, mentioned, right? You know, they talked about ambience, more ambient yes. light, and right. you know, more high dy- high dynamic range, uh, or I should just say more dynamic range. Sorry, I'm so used to talking about HDR, more dynamic range. <laughs> so hopefully, those subtle darks are a little more prevalent. Right, and I think uh, removing the belts is going to be an interesting. <clears throat> thing (laughs) removing the light belts is good but now the belts that i make for chain are actually worth something so um i i think i offered to sell them to people in in chat so Uh, you were on it i was very i was very impressed man rohan that that you took that opportunity (laughs) to sell your wares i was my inner drag just i tipped the cap to you sir i tipped the cap to you (laughs) you know it on that note though uh i one thing i want to kind of laud is that I they did a really good job of giving the like reason why we're temporarily mm-hmm. taking out belt torches and stuff. Like I was that that's something that I'm always going to praise when they can not only tell us hey we're doing this, but here's like kind of the reason why and how it's going to make the game better. Uh because first of all, if they just said they're taking it out for testing and like that was it, I think a lot mm-hmm. less people would be understanding, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, okay, this is a temporary thing, like, so that we can better refine what we have in front of us right now. Um, and then figure out how to add these things back later. Uh, it's a great, great way to go about it. Yeah. And, um, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he say that, uh, switching subjects a little bit, the group, the people that are 22 and above are being split off. But that's only temporary, right? He said so, they're mer- they're merging the servers again uh, later on, halfway through or something. I guess I'm starting to get a little yes. unclear on this because it sounded like it's a temporary thing until they put just a straight up level cap. But then the way they talked about it tonight, I'm I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Um, no, yeah, no, I remember what Van Rohan's talking about. He said halfway, so halfway through the season, that. Avendeers and the new server with all the 22s is just going to merge, which makes sense because then by that time we'll have a whole new crop of 22s, right? Or 22 pluses. Right. So right, and th- so then they'll just merge all those people together, and it'll be the v- the VIPs again. Right, because it seems like what they're going for is they're wanting there there to be fun gameplay, and right. they're less worried about the stuff. You know, maybe you you farm right. all the stuff. And they just don't like, want the okay, season to care. open up with like yeah that. How many people yeah. are twenty two plus forty? Oh, Screech says forty nine. Yeah, forty nine is what the they gave today. Obviously, there'll be more people by this weekend. Um, right, not me. <laughs> well, not anymore. If I was twenty two right now, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> or almost. We're, we're gonna get to twenty one and be like, left. please, please. If- like turn the death penalty on so I can de-level myself. Because if you're if you're 21 right now, you can swap back and forth whatever you want. <laughs> so, right. oh. I have 20 level twos. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's, that's a lot of. That's yeah. something else I just thought of, and I didn't hear. And again, maybe it's just drugs. But um, yeah. when the new server is created, does that mean VIPs from Avendir can now move to other other servers? They didn't say they didn't that. Mention that. They didn't, nobody I think, asked I that. think they're still okay. Uh, as far as okay. I know, they're still locked. But you know, maybe I could I could ask and uh, yeah, see. I just I uh, just thought of that. I Good. actually I'm thought about important. asking that, but I I didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all I had. There's probably more in there, but uh, thanks for chatting, guys. No problem. Looks like we got one more in. There's still room, guys. If you want to join the yep. Discord and get your thoughts in. This is the moment. Well, I need time. Should we? But drag, we do have Zelik there, so we, we gotta get Zelik. up. He he sounds. He's been spicy in chat. The X. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Come on in, Zelik. What's up, gentlemen? Hello, sir. What's going down? Oh, not much. Just uh, excited to see you bear the torch, literally, and not just metaphorically. Now. <laughs> Wizard torch bear. Yeah. That's pretty much what I've been relegated to. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we definitely aren't going to be using a two-handed staff. That's right. <laughs> There's all these people no. that don't want me to have a staff. 
They're everywhere. He's, he's, I he's, mean, he's most people to go to the doctor when they have a staff. <laughs> but uh, there's a way around that, though. What if we start getting stat torches? Torches with intelligence modifiers on them. Why can't my two-handed staff just glow? What's wrong with that? <laughs> can I, I can do that? I can I? Can I just do that? I mean, you could, right? No. Maybe get an ever-burning torch or something on your staff. I, I've definitely played other games that give stats on their torches, and I, I do love that. I do like if if the goal is for torches to be that big of a deal, I definitely think we should have statted torches be a thing. Yeah. Hundred percent agree. Like I am not. I have no objection to what they said they're going to do. And if they make some cool offhand items that glow and are effectively a torch, even if we don't call it a torch, you know, maybe you your offhand is the orb of mystical light, glowing purpleness of intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, then so, that's awesome. Yeah. Alternative light source items. Also, are you like? PvPing and WoW no, while you're he's totally the, playing uh, WoW season of discovery right now. hundred percent I'm in the middle of a BFD raid while we're a, talking. <laughs> I, was just, I was just gonna say that you were raiding. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Why are you hearing it in the keyboard? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm so uh, I'm tanking, so I'm spamming my uh my main oh my get aggro thing. That's amazing. <laughs> Zelic does um, it all. Uh, it's it the only way to do it. Anything else that like stood out to you, or I, I'm trying to think I'm what gonna, we haven't covered. I got yet. really excited to talk about Ranger momentum. Oh, you know? right. Rangers! Rangers got a little right. Like, I know I was a little disappointed in Sparrow for not bringing up Rangers. So I'm not gonna lie. Right. But uh, that's okay. That's... We still we still love Sparrow. We forgive Flaro. Um, so you know, uh, <laughs> no. The, the momentum thing sounds really cool. I love the concept of even just calling it momentum and having this, uh, this idea that when you're going in, you are building momentum and things are going to feed off of that momentum. But if you need to do something, you have to break that momentum. And there's a consequence for that. But maybe it's necessary in order to do something else. And I just, I love thematically how that works. You know, I'm imagining like... Uh, uh, Sirio Pharrell in Game of Thrones, right? The, the the water dancer, the swashbuckler guy. And what if yeah. that dude, you know, had to change what he was doing to save somebody else, you know, in the middle of the fight, which he kind of did in the series, right? So, I mean, I just, I don't know. Big appeals for me there on that one. I think any kind of system that has you have to kind of make these choices and like trade-offs like or or commit to something there's a certain amount of like commitment that you have to make it sounds like on the ranger uh whenever you perform an action and you have to like weigh the consequences and i you know for that Absolutely. reason alone i would probably like the ranger even if i didn't like it thematically i mean consequences for actions is right up there with risk versus reward right it's a, another way of saying the same thing just in maybe a more meaningful it can be more meaningful in a different context basically so, no, I am all for it. Not to mention, I am super glad that Chopper brought back up the manual aiming system. You know, all jokes <laughs> aside, going back to the old, uh, you know, before they took it down off of the web page where they were talking about the ranger abilities to, you know, manually aim and have a higher chance at critting your target. Like, as somebody who also plays Call of Duty, you let me FPS my arrows for bonus damage. Like, hell yeah. Well, he did at least confirm that it would be a pseudo aiming system so it doesn't sound like it's going to be like you have you to have actually exact aiming aim the arrows kind of a thing. i know but i know of an aim, my fantasy here. as a as a feel <laughs> thing though as a feel kind of a thing as long as like the camera work and, and animation is like you know done pretty pretty well i i, I love mean, how that could potentially feel but i could I see it even like, working kind of like uh like how AOEs on the ground work in WoW right now, right? Where you get the little ring that you drop on the ground right. underneath your target. Or maybe even if it's on your mouse cursor, and let's say it's a, a bullseye, right? Just making random thing up here. And maybe if you get 75% of that archery ring on your target, then you have like a 75% chance of critting them. You know, and if you just barely get the edge of it onto your target, maybe, you know, you get just a little bit of it. 
Uh, something like that, where it's, you know, just kind of place the mouse in the general direction, hit the button, you know, is... It, it really honestly doesn't matter to me what it is until I see it and get to play with it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm still so in favor of the, let's get some... Let's, uh... I mean, I guess it's skirting action a little bit, and while I don't like the action RPG control setup, I do like having more to do than just have the correct target in my hop, you know, in my in my unit frames and press the right spell. Like, give me a little more interactivity with it than that, so that I'm yeah. having to think about what I'm doing, and then my uh, even my mouse movements kind of gain meaningfulness. Then, yeah, it. I, I, who knows how it'll actually end up getting implemented. Um, but, you know, just like the darkness kind of changes, it's like we're going to have to feel it out because being a tab target game and then trying to switch it up, like there's some, there's probably some iteration that's going to happen there oh, absolutely. just to make it feel right. But anything that di differentiates your class from others is cool, pretty much. And well, so the mechanics would even mechanic. transfer, right? Like, uh, some people brought up in chat during the Q&A, what if you have, uh, you know, Mangling and Fireball? Uh, yeah, he did say that, didn't he? He did say that. So yeah, I, I don't it's know a exactly system what might be that intended. can carry over to other classes as well. And be honest, that means Drac has to do more work, and I'm here for it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this whole Drac doing more work thing. Drac's going to have to get off his mobile game. <laughs> right? Listen, I will. I will say this, Drac. I was looking out for you tonight. Uh, I did try to ask about when auction houses were getting implemented, and yeah, uh, Savanya was having nothing to do with that. They're not. They're, <laughs> they've said that they're not putting them until the end. Like it's not, not a priority no, now. It's uh, not a priority no, now. Not on it's any fine. level Dr is it a priority? Drac's bank account is never anybody's priority other yeah, than Drac's. Let's be is. honest. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But no, I think everybody else has covered a large bulk of the stuff pretty well. Um, but yeah, I wanted to touch on the Ranger thing and give Drax some flack over being a torchbearer. Now, literally, not just metaphorically. Now and forever. Yeah, pretty Sorry. Much. Pretty so, much. Yep. No, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, the darkness stuff, I'm actually here for it. Uh, the yeah. Now, I'm going to say that I'm making an assumption here, but I am assuming that the visibility issue uh, is going to be two ways right like if we go in and we don't have any torches lit and that mob you know and maybe that mob has dark vision you know and obviously that would negate um but you know maybe we can also use the cover of darkness to hide the party from a roaming mob we step into the shadows while you have a human patrolling a hallway for example so that you let that roamer go by and deal with it you know when it's isolated and on its own or whatever uh instead of having it lumped into the bigger pole that sure would be interesting. I mean, I don't know if that's an implication of it, uh, but yeah, sure I don't know if it is. But if the the whole the ability to see in the dark means you can't target went both ways, that would be pretty cool, you know, barring haven't some they, ability like dark vision. Haven't they said there's dispositions that focus on player light? I remember something uh, about that. Uh, I don't there's, remember. Like, there's dispositions there's that, like, aggro, is... aggro people with light that have light sources. I uh, seem to remember that somewhere. somewhere. I, I, don't I think I do that. vaguely remember that. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh. I, I, that was just in the back of my mind that, that was a thing. Like, imagine you have, again, like, some creature that lives in the dark, and, you know, maybe the dark, maybe the bright light actually bothers it. Like, yeah. Maybe it actually gets blinded while it's in the bright light, and so it gets more hostile and aggressive towards people carrying light sources. Yeah, may, they might be able to tie in new dispositions to the, the Zip system says now, they did, and I can't it. remember what it was called. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. All, all I'm remembering is pyrophobic, but they, they've mentioned a lot of dispositions over the years. Joppa alluded to the possibility of light sources affecting aggro. Yeah, I remember something being said like that, for sure. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Yeah. But uh, eventually, well, eventually, in less than a week, uh, we'll all be We're figuring that out. Yeah, we'll be yeah. seeing how it feels. Probably 
walking into pitch dark rooms with no torches because we can't give up our stats. Right, Drac? 100%. 100%. 100%. Drac, I will follow you around and bear your torch in exchange for one-sixth of the loot. Uh, no. Or one-seventh of the loot. Sorry, one-seventh of the loot. I am the seventh man. It's like like the Seahawks' 12th man in the stadium, right? I'm the seventh man for the level 22 group. I just follow behind, bear the torch, collect loot. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, oh we've got people in chat saying they'll do it for a tenth now yeah, we're, now you're we're, we're, bad, uh, buddy. it's a pitting war <laughs> <laughs> this is this is that bid right to the bottom they all know how much money i make on at, at a given time so they're they're one oh, day yeah. in the action <laughs> oh that's funny all right well uh anything else Zelik? no 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 i got nothing else really all right um, i think maybe we'll we'll uh Pop in Mr. C for the end here and and wrap it up. What do you think, Drac? Yeah, I did think of one more thing, but we can discuss that with Mr. C. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Later, Zell. Thanks for hopping on, Zell. We'll see you. Yeah, I hope your raid goes me. well. It's done. We won. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right, Mr. C. So as Mr. C's coming in. Yeah. We. So what is this thing you want to discuss with me? Yes. Are you going to do the GM event on Friday? Uh, that's a big maybe. That's a big maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How many things are going on on Friday? Yeah. Friday. I mean, depends. Like, I'm going to have to be like level 16. If that's true, I ain't going to make it. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an all hands on deck, just crazy throw everybody at a mob situation as is tradition for the end of a big testing session, as we've done, you right. know, a good handful of times in the past. Uh, I did think the comment that Joppa made about how it's rigged up is pretty funny. Uh, it's literally just a bear with, like, <laughs> dragon clothing, basically. <laughs> but But this is the last time it'll be that way. So that was a funny tease. So does does that mean one day we'll get Big Brown yet again? Big Brown? What well, wasn't that wasn't that a, a bear that they spawned for a test a, a long time ago? Was that it called Big... I want to say it was called Big Brown, but I could be wrong. Maybe that's just my pants. Wah, wah. I cannot actually remember. Yeah, I was thinking I got nothing. You know, there was Fuzz Ruckus uh, as far as like since the refactor but then uh caragon right is that the name of it uh i wrote it down somewhere uh caragos caragos i'm pretty sure they've been in pa before um yeah there you go but does that mean we're actually going to get a new dragon model or is it going to be the same dragon model that we i got the idea that? that this was going to be the same one with the bear with the dragon model over it and then the next time we saw this one, this dragon, it was going to be an actual dragon. Right. Like, it's actually going to fight like a dragon. Right. In the in the sense of... So like, what you're telling me is that they're going to take the dragon model that we have, put a bear head on it, and call it a good day. <laughs> I don't think that's at all what they were no. saying. They're taking... But that's what I want. Listen, no one else wants it, but I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, Mr. C. I'm not surprised, but I, I bet you anything, uh, which they, they said this was six, six o'clock Pacific, right? Six Pacific. Yep. Uh, so I'm pretty sure, uh, we're going to do this once on, uh, like Haven song or something opened up to like everybody. I, I think we might do it again on Avendeer. Uh, I'd have to check with somebody well, on that. Well, the people on Avendeer can't get off Avendeer. Exactly. That's why I uh. think that they might be doing it twice. So another uh, another key thing that will determine whether or not I attend is how much free loot I get at level one. That's well, going to be the biggest. Oh reason. yeah, very good. You know, you're doing pretty good in OC already. So I haven't gotten anything. Okay. <laughs> oh, you didn't get it. Okay, I thought one of you guys got a bunch of stuff. I think it was mainly Zelic and Vendini name drops. There you go. <laughs> we were trying to keep them to just friends. <laughs> 
I will listen. I, I'm here for the drama. I, I'll read the Discord posts. <laughs> oh, jeez. Desmond, did you listen it to is... the did you listen to the After Dark last night? I was, yeah, there I was there when we the read it the first time. time. Oh, you were there. Okay. And I was there during the day. Oh yeah, you were. I thought you were just what's there for this, the day. What's all this what's all this drama? This SGL drama. Come on. A lot of drama. I'm just kidding. A lot of drama. Uh, we are the <laughs> prominent drama stream now. If someone well, says, listen, I don't like how you run the streams, we will put them on full blast. <laughs> or at least Mr. C will at least read your stuff snarkily. <laughs> So that everybody can't help but laugh, even if we're trying to listen to what it said. <laughs> to be fair, though, it was listen. If there's a reason for it to be snarkily red, I'll read the snarkily red. But there's it sounds like, serious. There's like fifty. Oh, there's there's like low. fifty new comments on that thing. So I know I'm not going to be able to read all that. Okay. Let's be real. <laughs> Unless think, someone okay. says we're just going to let it die. We're just letting it die. Yeah, we're, we're going to let sleeping yeah. dogs lie. Let you know bees nest be. Yep, let it sleep for as long as it'll sleep. <laughs> um, Mr. C, what, did you actually want to come have and talk about else the dragon? Or was to... there... I just, listen, I went on there to make the green room not be so lonely so that maybe oh. someone else with a better opinion would come in and <laughs> yeah. say, uh, have their opinion. That's true, that's true. We, we did kind of just, it was regular night tonight. So, you know, maybe next time, guys. Uh, Gula listen, Gula, you at home... You at home, your opinions matter, all right? You could be, as long as you're not, like, really, um, you, you know, you can be critical. Just don't be an ass about it. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the general rule, right? Yep. But uh, I guess, do we do we cut it off there, Drac? Yeah, I think we're, yeah. I mean, we've gone... Ooh, a nice round eight o'clock. Yeah, we've it. gone ninety minutes. I mean, that's pretty good. It's a that's a standard plus you. That's a standard plus you. We don't we, we're not the rewind here. We're not going two and a half hours, you know. <laughs> and I mean, we didn't get anything crazy like barred <laughs> announcements or anything. So you know, no, no, you know, I, I somehow I don't think that uh, saying Summoner was not coming in season two, and then following that up with like, oh, but we still want to do. Part of Necro, probably not the best like stream I of think, thoughts. I there. definitely think they should have saved the no summoner until the end of the stream. <laughs> they should I'm, have dropped I'm, that. I'm, in the, I'm the opposite. I'm like, just get it out of the way. Like that was. I love. It. I'm like, just you know, give me the bad news first, and then <laughs> then we just roll with everything. Could so. you? I, I imagine a lot of summoner mains just being like, all right, I'm here for this this uh, Q and A. Also, summoners aren't coming, and they're out. They're, they don't even care about the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Can there's, you imagine? One... Can you imagine when they drop summoners? There's gonna be so many summoners oh, yeah. everywhere. It's gonna be 100%. summoner. They better be able to tank because that's they're gonna have yeah. groups. Oh, they'll do everything. Six people of six summoners. <laughs> that's all that's gonna be running around is six summoners. There's gonna be zero tanks. So I, unashamedly, I'll be rolling one too. Like I, <laughs> I expect Jeez. this. I it'll won't be, be rolling one because I go against the grain. That's the kind of person oh, I am. Oh, yeah. Such a hipster. I, I'm such a hipster. Have you seen the games I play? Very True. hipstery. Yeah, you know, honestly, you've got me there. No one can really outcompete you there. Thank you, True. All right, Jack. All right. Well, we do have some things coming up this week. Des, what do you got coming up this week? Uh, Me? You... Um, Me and... Yeah, I just realized I didn't kick out Mr. C. Mr. C, you're coming with us. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, me and Theric are actually recording a rewind on Friday that will air on Sunday. Um, we did realize that it is Easter, but you know what? It's it's on YouTube. You guys watch it whenever. You don't have to be there for the premiere, but you oh, know no, if you, you can make it, that's there. awesome. Don't even let Des talk yeah. that. I, you know, people got plans. I, I, you know, whatever. Uh, it would be awesome if you're there, though, because uh, we probably have a decent amount of stuff to catch up on, and you know, our thoughts on season one, and just you know, all the info they've dropped over the last two months or so, two months I think, uh, since the last one. So, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be good fun. I mean, Therick always like doing these. It's, it's kind of like our hangout time too. So you guys just kind of come along with it. Uh, but yeah, that'll be coming up. On Sunday, uh, kind of right after the start of season two, so it's going to be a crazy time. Crazy time. Yep. 
And also don't forget Monday, April 1st, not a April 1st joke. It is a for real deal that we are going to be streaming for 12 hours. Me, Dez, Nathan, Nathan, Dimelos, and the crew, 12 hours of season two Pantheon Mad Run excitement. That will be Monday. So tune in. We're going to be going from morning to night. It's going to be great. Yep. Yep. No sleep. <laughs> no sleep during the day, as long as we're not tired. All right. Well, that's it for us. Nice little tidy 90 minute stream. Wave goodbye to the people. I'll probably Bye-bye, pick somebody. Guys. I'll probably pick somebody to raid. So uh make sure you, you give them lots of hype when we join. Have a great night, Woo. everyone.